Hi guys, it's Frankie from Frankie Watch. Good to see you all again. And here with a quick video, I wanted to do a comparison between two watches that I'm currently checking here at work, but what a rare opportunity to do a quick comparison between the new Tudor Pelagos 39 and in my opinion, the watch that it's kind of inspired from in terms of dial, the Rolex Sea Dweller 126600. You can definitely see a lot of inspiration here. Namely, of course, we have that red text on the dial between Pelagos and Sea Dweller. And I think there's a lot of other features related to these two watches that you can definitely see the inspiration from the Sea Dweller in the Pelagos. Now, of course, the Pelagos being titanium, it's a completely different build and dimensions wise, they're so different. This being a 14.5 millimeter thick beast of a watch, sorry, 1,220 meters of water resistance versus a paltry 200 here on the Pelagos 39. And this is really what I wanted to do was compare the Pelagos 39 next to a Submariner, but in this case, the Sea Dweller has that same black glossy bezel. Shows you just how much sheen there truly is on this Pelagos 39. It's pretty obvious. It almost turns gray in appearance. The other thing obviously that's different about these is we do have the Cyclops with the date on the Sea Dweller 126 600. The Pelagos 39 is a time only watch. I think it's a lot cleaner looking on the Pelagos 39. But there you see the text, four lines of text on these. And of course we have applied indices on the Sea Dweller while the Tudor is using these loom plots, these ceramic loom plots, which give it a much more vintage retro inspired look. And of course we have the helium escape valve on the Sea Dweller, no helium escape valve on this Pelagos. But there's one similar thing related to the bracelet that we do see, and that is the dive extension here on the Sea Dweller. But the Sea Dweller goes a step further, including glide lock, which you can also use to get another 20 millimeters of extension, while T-Fit allows for quite a bit of extension, but it's, I think, a little bit more limited, only up to 10 millimeters back and forth, but you do have that diver's extension, which is a really nice touch as well. On the wrist, as I've shown you guys before, the Pelagos 39 does fit very nicely and is quite a bit more substantial than you would expect, even though it is super light being a titanium, grade two titanium, which is the purest form of titanium. But in this case, the Sea Dweller, it's a beast on the wrist and you can definitely just notice that from the clasp to the entire experience, this thing wears really thick. I've never owned a Sea Dweller. I definitely am getting more excited at the prospect of doing that at some point, just having a crazy dive watch with 1200 meters water resistance. I think it looks fantastic and I really don't mind the glossy nature of the bezel on this watch. And the last question I wanted to address here was how much larger is the clasp on the Pelagos 39 compared to what you typically get with the Rolex Submariner, in this case, the Sea Dweller. There you see it, they are pretty similar in size. The width, I would say, is the big difference. This one coming out to around 19 millimeters versus 21, 22 millimeters here on the Sea Dweller. But you do notice one thing, that's right, the Tudor clasp is longer just by a hair than the ones on the sub. So if you were worried about the clasp on the Pelagos 39 becoming a little bit too unwieldy, this may be something to consider. I think it looks very nice, but I think some of you will think that this is a little bit too long for day-to-day -day use for your liking, and you would prefer something a little bit shorter on the Pelagos 39. So that's it for this quick comparison of the Pelagos 39 and the Rolex Sea Dweller. I do think there's a lot that this watch is taking from the Sea Dweller, but it's also applying its own vintagey style and the knurling on the bezel definitely is different. I think if anything the <laughs> the crowns do look actually pretty similar on these but besides that you see the size comparison once again between the Pelagos 39 and another Rolex offering the Sea Dweller 126600 here on Frankie Watch. But hit me up in the comments what are your thoughts on these two watches and do you think Tudor has taken a bit too much from watches like the Sea Dweller or do you think they're offering something different and unique here to consumers? 
Hit me up in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And that's it for this video. If you liked it, give me that thumbs up. And if you love the content of Frankie Watch, subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon for future updates. Terrific watch, guys. It's not for everyone, but I do think if you've been looking for a 39mm Pelagos, this may be the one for you. So that's it. And Frankie Watch says, time's up. Have a good one. Great watch, guys. But honestly, between these two, I think I'd be going with Sea Dweller. Oh, yeah.